Today, GameRanks is bringing you 25 of the best open-world Android games to play in 2015. Now, that doesn't mean released in 2015, that means they're great to play. Number 25, Block Story. Block Story combines 3D block building, sandbox exploration, with some RPG and combat elements. You're not just building, you're building for a reason. However, it's a reason that you create. Block Story can go on as long as you want to play it, because the world and the quests are all procedurally generated. There's a lot of different enemies to fight, and building your own fortress is obviously a satisfying practice. And if you're a fan of the game, that clearly inspired this one, you may want to try it. Number 24, Zombie Raiders. Zombie Raiders is massively multiplayer. It's obviously dominated by zombies and you, well, raid them. You scavenge resources and build a clan. That clan continually scavenges more resources and continually builds itself. There's not really a story, but an open world game on Android, you would kind of hope it'd be able to go on for a very long time, especially one that's massively multiplayer. If you're looking for a fun game to play with your friends, Zombie Raiders can definitely accommodate that. Number 23, Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi is a ridiculous, you pick up passengers ready to go from here to there. They pay your fare based on how quick you do it. Sounds pretty simple. It's not. Crazy Taxi has a constant timer counting down, and the timer can make it very frustrating to satisfy people and get their full fare, which you have to do in order to continue playing the game. Ridiculous and tons of fun. Crazy Taxi is a must play, whether you played the game in the 90s or not. Number 22, Mines from Mars. This game is what you would get if you combine Terraria with Metroid. At first glance, it seems heavier on the Terraria elements, but once you get to mining, it becomes obvious that there's more than meets the eye. You arrive in an abandoned mining colony without having any idea exactly what happened here. Obviously, you need to find out, as well as mine for resources. It's an extremely compelling and atmospheric experience and one I would recommend. Number 21, Odd World Stranger's Wrath. If you're aware of Odd World, you know how extremely strange it is. Who better to explore it than a character named Stranger? Now, Stranger's a bounty hunter trying to earn enough moolah, which is the in-game money, to pay for a life-saving operation. There's kind of a monster hunter slash stealth vibe going on here, and it's maybe slightly more complex than some of the other Odd World games. There's some shooting elements completely unique to Stranger as far as the Odd World goes, making the game pretty unique to the series. Definitely a fun game worth playing. Number 20, Six Guns Gang Showdown. Playing as Buck Crosshaw, which is quite the name, you're an outlaw, taking on various missions, from defeating robbers, to racing horses, to the standard fight waves of enemies gameplay that you see in a lot of other games. However, there are just not very many competent Wild West games on mobile, and this is more than that. It's actually a game that plays extremely well. Number 19, The Amazing Spider-Man. There's a ton going on in this Spider-Man game, not the least of which is a really enjoyable web-slinging and swinging system. You play in Manhattan, there's tons of random missions, there's collectibles everywhere, and the game gives you some pretty nice graphics. There's also upgrades, so you can really customize how you play the game. Regardless of what you think of the movies, the game is a really solid, enjoyable one that is absolutely worth its $6.99 price tag. Number 18, Gangstar Vegas. Gangstar Vegas is an open world action game. The story takes place in 80 missions across a very large, large representation of Las Vegas. You play as a rising MMA star and the mafia frames you. Everything basically goes to hell and, well, you have to shoot your way through the city. There's some pretty enjoyable weapons, some really goofy vehicles, and a really cool soundtrack by some really great artists. Well, it's got Skrillex and Kavinsky on it, so... Basically, it's not the same thing as Grand Theft Auto, but if you like Grand Theft Auto, it's definitely worth checking out. Number 17, Exiles. Exiles is a 3D sci-fi role-playing game that takes place on a quote-unquote distant world. It's the near future, and it turns out somebody's trying to enslave the world that you've recently colonized. It involves government plots and conspiracy, and fighting some pretty massive aliens. There's very little to complain about because it is extremely competent and an enjoyable shooter. It's a very pretty game as well, and kind of reminded me a bit of Gears of War in a way. Number 16, Ravensword Shadowlands. From the same developer that brought you Exiles, Ravensword is basically the fantasy counterpart to Exiles. Although there's quite a few different ways to accomplish your goals that are not in the other game, like stealth, pickpocketing, and magical runes. It's quite a few different weapon types, and there's some massive enemies. Add this on top of the gorgeous visuals, and this is a game that you have to check out. Number 15, from the same developer, Aralon. Aralon is kind of like Crescent Moon's version of Skyrim. You have both third person and first person play, a day and night cycle, skill trees, dual wielding weapons, potions, and a pretty massive world to explore. Make no mistake, for a mobile game, this is a gorgeous game. It's got great effects, great environments. One of the cooler aspects of it is that the Elder Scrolls artist Mark Jones was actually involved in creating the game. You're going to end up wasting a lot of time with this if you start playing it. It is a great deal of fun. 
Number 14, Bad Nerd. Bad Nerd is bizarre. Has weird graphics, weird but really actually fun music, and takes you on a quest to rid the school of bullies. The idea is that you're fighting the bullies taking their lunch money to upgrade yourself with a wide range of weapons and armor, which is really enjoyable if you ask me. It's a really goofy game, but it's addicting and for whatever reason also endearing. It's constantly improving with the eventual goal of becoming a sandbox MMO, but as of now it's both quirky and fun and definitely worth playing. Number 13, The Shadow Sun. Ossian Studios, who's worked on both Dungeons and Dragons and The Witcher, came together to really create a great, deep, story-driven, open-world game on Android. Knowing that the team is partially responsible for Witcher games, that kind of helps you with what to expect with this game. It's a 10-hour adventure, but you could easily spend a lot more time playing it. There's 70 unique areas and, and over 200 unique items. There's just a ton going on. Number 12, The Dark Knight Rises. Obviously an adaption of the film with the same name, Bruce Wayne decided to hold back for about eight years, but he couldn't stay away, so he gets back into action as Batman. There's a lot of situations that seem a lot like Arkham, but obviously are much more inspired by the movie itself. You pretty much get access to Batman's entire cache of weapons, and can use all of them to inflict quite a bit of pain on your enemies. It's a great adaption of the film, and a really fun game. Number 11, Terraria. Essentially an open world 2D mining game. Terraria is a pretty weird world. There's tons and tons of different things that you can do in it, whether it's fighting enemies, mining for resources, crafting items, from weapons to armor to potions, and God knows what else. Really, if you don't know what Terraria is at this point, Terraria is fun as hell. And if you like 2D, and if you like 2D Metroidvanias, Minecraft, or just fun games in general, you need to try this one. Number 10, Goat Simulator. Goat Simulator is a bizarre take on the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, whatever you call that genre. You run around as a goat, complete random tasks, and just generally cause complete and total chaos. Goat Simulator is beyond bizarre. It's weird, it's silly, and it knows what it is. I cannot imagine a situation where I would not recommend this game. It's weird as hell, and in some cases it's very buggy, but it celebrates its own bugs in a way that you don't really see in a lot of games. It's tons of fun. Number 9, Icewind Dale Enhanced Edition. Originally released 15 years ago, Icewind Dale needed an enhanced edition, and we got it. Set in the Forgotten Realms, you journey deep into the mountains and confront an ultimate evil. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's the most original story you'll ever have, but it is Dungeons & Dragons, and it is a fantastic game. There's so much to do in this game, and there's a lot of quest content cut from the original that was finished and implemented in this version of the game. It also looks a lot better. If you've never played this game or just really need a copy, copy of it that you can take anywhere and play at any time, I'd really recommend this one. Number 8, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Between Grand Theft Auto 3 and San Andreas, Rockstar massively upped their game. This was our first journey to Los Santos, which is the Los Angeles equivalent in the Grand Theft Auto world. It has a much more cinematic story and feel, and gives you over 70 hours of gameplay, which is utterly ridiculous. It even has remastered high resolution graphics that are better than the originals. Really, there's no reason not to play Grand Theft Auto San Andreas on any platform, especially the one that it looks best on. Number 7, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. Now you pretty much know what you're getting, especially after I just described two Grand Theft Auto titles, so I won't get too extreme about it, but it is a different take on the franchise that you haven't really played much of since it moved to 3D. And if you ask me, it's a very worthwhile style of play still, and it might even be neat to see more titles like this one. Number 6, Ninth Dawn. Ninth Dawn is extremely old school. It's 2D, and when I say it's 2D, I mean it's 2D. It is like how games used to be. It's a lot of fun. But the nice thing is, is you get that same open world philosophy that all the other games on this list have, except for the aesthetic is completely old school. If you've ever played Ultima, you know what you're getting from the combat. Just add in open world, which is, like I said, a really fantastic addition to this type of game. It's so easy to get immersed in this thing, and I definitely recommend giving it a go. Number 5, Star Traders RPG. Star Traders is a turn-based strategy game where you pilot a ship around a grid and it really resembles a lot of enjoyable old type of strategy RPGs. You get to play as a space pirate and have to challenge enemies as well as the economy. So you have to deal with trading on top of everything else. If you enjoy something like Master of Orion, you'll definitely enjoy Star Traders. Number 4, Grand Theft Auto 3, the original 3D Grand Theft Auto game, and probably one of the most influential games that's ever happened. Grand Theft Auto really just kind of started everything that we play now. It wasn't the first open world game, but it was probably the most popular and earliest version of the 3D open world game. It controls tight, it looks very pretty, with some upgraded 3D models, has a great soundtrack, and is really just fun as hell to play. 
Number 3, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. The original 60 hour epic is all here. Released in 1998, Baldur's Gate absolutely set the standard for Dungeons and Dragons based video games. You basically know what you're getting if you played the original, however you're also getting a ton of extra stuff, including more quests, more worlds, and better graphics. Number 2, Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition. It's really hard to describe Baldur's Gate 2 when you just describe Baldur's Gate 1. As far as gameplay, there's not a heck of a lot of difference. As far as graphics, also not a heck of a lot of difference. But it is an extremely interesting title. It contains the entire original campaign as well as expansions. If you like the original Baldur's Gate or Icewind Dale, this is so worth it. And finally, number one, Minecraft Pocket Edition. You know what Minecraft is. Everyone does. The mining and building and exploration phenomenon has been available on mobile for quite a while. While. And whether you've played it, whether you haven't, at this point you should. Minecraft is such a good way to waste some time and immerse yourself in a sandbox environment that basically lets you do exactly what you want. The game encourages creativity in such a way that many people have created things that I just don't understand. They're amazing. It's an extremely worthwhile and fun game that you can turn hundreds of hours of your life over to. In the comments section, we'd really appreciate it if you told us what your favorite of all these are or if we missed any. If you're playing an open world game we didn't mention that you think people would like we want to know we want to play it also if you enjoyed this video please click the like button it helps us immensely now if you're new to game ranks make sure you click the subscribe button it is the best way to get our daily videos first thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you next time